Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're starting the day early again and the sun's just coming up. And what you're looking at are the well drilling rigs. Um, they started yesterday. And heavy storm moved through, pouring rain, lightning and thunder, so they uh, quit for the day, but they'll be back this morning. And uh, let's head over there, take a look, see what they got done. Okay, guys, on the uh, casing truck, Miller Power there for welding the casing together and stuff. Gotta like that. Uh, here is the drill rig. And we were able to hit ledge at 20 feet yesterday, which is a good thing. So we don't need too much casing. And we're starting to bore through the rock now. You can see all the rock dust. But we're going for it. And uh, who knows when we're going to hit water. Hopefully we, uh, we get it pretty quick today. But... Um, I think we got 25 maybe 30 feet yesterday so hopefully um, everything is gonna turn out okay today we'll see what happens when they get started today and uh, we'll hope for the best hope we find water pretty quick so let's head back into the shop and I will bring you up to date on Gary's engine show you where we're at on that Okay guys, here's Gary's engine, all finished up. Uh, just waiting on an oil pump. Uh, I had thought, I gave a quick look at the, the oil pump that came on this engine from that other shop. And it was painted so nice. Uh, and I thought it was new. And I took it apart and it was a disaster. Uh, it was the original oil pump on there and... Um, I'm not going to put that back on there. So, uh, oil pump should be here today. Uh, engine is fully assembled. I got the alternator on there for you, Gary, uh, as best I can so the fan doesn't hit it and the belts are still lined up. Uh, I got the correct bolt in there. You don't have three inches of thread sticking out. Um, <clears throat> I've got the correct length ARP studs uh, there you, you see them here all over the place we've got three and three quarters we got four inch we got four and a quarter for your lifting lug here um, good quality studs in there now and let me think of what else I did for you your oil uh, timing gear jet uh, I changed like I do all of them from 70 thousandths hole in there to a 45 thousandths hole um, they, they learned early on that 70 thousandths was too much oil for the timing jet there. And it took oil away from the number one connecting rod. So you won't have to worry about scuffing the connecting rod. Uh, I put your intake and exhaust manifold and carburetor on just as I took it off. But I used the correct hardware this time instead of just floppy washers in there like, the, like what was on there. Um, so that should be fine. Um, your fuel pump I put on as I took it off. I don't know if you can see in here, but you do have a spacer in here. And that spacer will, will change your fuel pump pressure. So, uh, without running this, I don't know where your fuel pump pressure is going to be. Uh, if it's too low, take the spacer out. Um, but I, you're not going to know that until you run it. Uh, if you have, you know, flooding issues or something like that, uh, go right to the fuel pump. And, uh, and check your fuel pressure. Uh, I think that's about it. Your oil filter, I left right in the canister there. It was brand spanking new. The oil in there was very clean because, um, I mean, there was no hours on the motor. Uh, I put your original spark plugs back in there. They were a little uh, black, but they'll clean right up when you start it. Uh, valves are adjusted uh, after maybe 500 miles or so. Maybe get back in there and adjust the valves. Um, pressure lube this before you start it. There's assembly lube on everything, Gary. But um, 
uh, pressure lube it before you start it so there's oil everywhere uh, I've got videos out there if you want to refer to those um, a break-in oil uh, 30 weight or so is good for breaking in and then I always run the shell Rotella 1540 in these engines so after you break it in and change the filter you could fill it up with the with the shell Rotella and like I say just the oil pump has to go on there and I have to set the distributor and put the plug wires on and uh, this is just about ready to come back to you Gary so there it is all finished up and I will let you know as soon as it's ready to come back to you uh, if you have any questions or anything just let me know but um, this will be a good running engine for a long time I'm sure so I know it took a little bit longer than we expected but parts and cranks and things like that were just a nuisance to get but it's together now I feel real good about it and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it and it'll make the make the M38 project uh, that much closer to being finished one more thing to talk about Gary um, I like to uh, put a filter somewhere before the carburetor um, I usually put it uh, on the line coming in so I have a filter um, before the the fuel pump uh, some guys like to put them in this line right here uh, they look kind of out of place there and stuff so I filter them before you can put a filter anywhere in here but I do recommend you filter your fuel um, you know could be junk in the fuel tank and the fuel these days is, is crazy uh, you don't know what you're gonna pick up so best to get a fuel filter in there somewhere uh, under the tank in the line uh, like I say I, I like to put one right about this area here and then jump into the filter and my uh, and my uh, uh, the, jump into the pump and, and my filter sitting right there it's easy to change but um, whatever you want to do just get some uh, fuel filter somewhere in there okay guys later in the day drilling rig is gone and you can see all the spoils we took out of that hole uh, we hit water uh, not too deep and then we kept on drilling to look for a little bit more gallons a minute. And that well now is 545 feet. And we have very good uh, water coming out of there. Uh, we drilled from about 20 feet to 500 feet through solid granite and then we hit a vein we were getting you know five gallons a minute or so at maybe a uh, hundred feet and it stayed the same 200 300 it wasn't really kicking up there uh, we got into some crumbly stuff at 500 feet and hit a nice vein uh, went down to 545 and we are getting tremendous flow now and we finally have a deep well with plenty of water for the house and the barn and the animals and everything like that so uh, I've got 180 feet to go to the house to get water in there and then I've got a couple hundred feet to hook into um, the farm water so I'm finishing projects, but I really got to get on this, and I've got to get on the backhoe and start trenching, laying uh, water lines. Uh, I got to get the pump uh, in the well at 500 feet, and I've got to set the pressure tank, all that stuff. So uh, I'm not abandoning anybody's project, but um, I am taking some time to get this done. Uh, we have rain coming in, so I'm not going to dig the trench and get flooded. So. Um, I don't know maybe in a couple couple days I'll be jamming on this but um, I've got to get it done and uh, hope everybody with projects understands but um, <clears throat> let's head back into the barn and I finally have Gary's engine finished up and we'll take a peek at that okay 
as promised the oil pump showed up you can see it down there still fresh with paint on it uh, oil pump is in distributor is set as close as I can get it uh, for startup and uh, I'm not sure where these wires came from Gary but um, I don't know they're not they don't sit on there real good I don't, I don't know how the connection is going to be with those wires uh, if you have any misfires or anything um, get rid of those wires and put some better ones on there I, I, I don't think they're real great um, and again I don't know where they came from but um, they just don't they, they just don't fit the cap or the plug real well I mean I'm sure you can get started with it but if you have any trouble uh, look there first uh, now I'm shipping you this engine again uh, you know, it sound like a broken record, but it's going to be dry. It's going to have assembly lube everywhere, but it's going to be dry. You've got to prime this engine, uh, fill up the oil pump, uh, push oil through the whole entire engine before starting it up, and uh, you'll be in good shape. So, uh, next step is get it off the stand and put the engine plate, flywheel, and clutch on there, and then get it in the crate and uh, send it back to Gary. So, um, it's finished up, it's looking good, and I'm happy the way it came out. Okay guys, there's Gary's engine, 100% finished up. Um, when I went to put the clutch on there, I noticed the... I don't know if it was the last guy who rebuilt it or what happened, but there was a very crummy pressure plate on there uh, on a new disc. So I put a new pressure plate on there and I put in some good quality ARP uh, pressure plate bolts. I use those on a lot of restorations because um, the originals, uh, the, the quality is not there. I've, I've started to tighten down originals and just have them snap and I always use ARPs um, because they're the best bolts out there right now and uh, it, it, I don't have to worry about them breaking so I've had the engine on the stand I've got Gary's crate right here and it's going back in the crate today and um, I have all your old parts Gary uh, if you want me to put them on top of the crate or try and stuff them in the crate I can do that uh, I don't know what you'll do with that F head cam or anything like that, but I do have all your old parts if you want them uh, Please let me know and I'll get them boxed up with the engine And there it is all finished up